Imagine this, an electric go-kart made from a 45 dollar ladder. Yes, you heard that right. Today we're going to build something epic. An electric go-kart using nothing but this ladder, some welding, and a lot of determination. Oh, and all those parts. What did you expect? That already only costs 45 doll hairs to make a racing machine faster on a motorcycle? Yeah, I lied to you. And I'm not sorry. I need a real newbie after watching this video. Let's go! Here's what we're working with today. We've got some wheels, motors and an ESC from Flipsky. We've got a 52 volt 20 amp hour battery. All of this will come together to make our electric go-kart. Oh yeah, and of course, our $45 ladder that we're going to be using as a chassis. <laughs> All right, it's time to turn this $45 ladder into a go-kart chassis. No, full disclosure, I'm really nervous because I've never welded anything in my life before. That's why I bought myself a brand new welding machine and a plasma cutter. Do you even know how hard it is to weld? Actually, I have no idea, but that's part of the fun, I guess. Let the fun begin! So, I watched one whole YouTube video, didn't read the manual, and got to work like a real man. So now you get to enjoy some footage of me absolutely butchering my brand new plasma cutter. So watch what happens next. I'm such a noob. Guys, I don't know what the f I'm doing, but I don't think this is supposed to happen. I also burnt one of those tips off, like not this one, but another one completely off. Destroy your own tools like a real man. You know what? Give me a good old angle grinder and I'm good to go. Problem solved, and I only lost 250 euros. Now you're witnessing my first ever welds, like ever, and it shows. For the welding I watched two whole YouTube videos, still didn't read the manual and got to work like a real man, and it shows. Yeah, that's just nasty. You're absolutely right past me. Now let's stress test it, but don't put too much stress on it. That's okay. Oh look, he figured out how to use the plasma cutter on a very thin piece of metal so it's easier. Now that I became a pro at welding and plasma cutting, it was time to start. Let's fucking go! Woohoo, sparkles! <clears throat> I mean, hell yeah, real man shit. I could already envision it. I'd be the fastest kid on the block. Maybe Max Verstappen would notice me and offer me an F1 contract. Or maybe not. I think I might be some kind of genius yeah, because boy. I just cut the right parts off. I know I think I can use these stairs as a sort of seat. So I'm gonna take a piece of this and then put it here so I can attach the wheels. Would you look at that? Perfect. Almost. It should weld right on the frame. <laughs> or so I thought. You see, here I'm using a flux core welding setup, which is gauzeless welding. But I have a gauze nozzle at the end of my welding gun, which makes it really hard for a beginner like me to see what I'm actually doing. Therefore, I was not hitting the right spot. That's what she yeah. said! <laughs> I did a couple of test runs, and I changed the settings of the machine to see what works best. I just think I need to keep practicing before I do it on the real thing. That's what she a said! Few <laughs> moments later. I mean, look at this! It's like I'm a fucking pro already. How the fuck did I do this? I don't know. From this shit to this in half an hour? Well, I removed the gas nozzle and played with the settings of the machine. I did it again! Next up, I have to think about the rear axle. It's going to be a 2cm or 20mm axle. Normally they are bigger than that for go-karts, they are like 30 or 40 or 50. To attach the axle to the frame, I have those parts, so the axle can fit perfectly in this. What? Uh, what the fuck? Should fit in there. I'm thinking of just bolting them on there, on the frame, like so. So basically... We're almost two weeks further and I almost have made no progress. Let me try to explain this as shortly as possible because most people have the attention span of a goldfish. I buy a big piece of metal, 20 mm diameter, but not straight, didn't see it. I buy parts, 20 mm diameter, parts don't fit what? on bar, 20 mm, 20 mm, no gold. The fuck? Because this is 19.96 mm. 
No go. I cry. <laughs> Dude. Lots of sanding. After hours sanding, parts fit. <laughs> fit a little bit. But wheels and bar don't go together. No rear wheel hubs 20mm. On the internet, Google nothing. So I cry. <laughs> I try to make piece of metal. This thing what I make is not perfectly straight. When turning, it's a little bit vibration. No good. So I cry. Leave me alone now here. Leave me alone. I go internet, buy new stuff. 40 millimeters. Look at the difference in size. The new parts have arrived. Will it fit? Oh, it does my God. fit perfectly. Damn, that's wide. Holy shit. Now that I had all the parts for the rear axle, I decided to continue with the steering mechanism. So I cut up this piece and then tried to weld it together. Emphasis on the trying part. Let's give it a shot. So what went wrong here is that, uh, well, I'm an absolute idiot who pretends to know what he's doing but actually has no clue of what it is that I'm doing. So if you're good at welding, please let me know in the comments what I was doing wrong. I used a 0.6mm wire, so I don't know why, but I keep blowing through the metal, even though I set the machine at probably the lowest setting. It's like I'm a fucking it's pro already. Might be able to sand this out. <laughs> I later on weld some metal on top of these holes to cover them up. Now, because I wasn't really trusting those first welds, I decided to add a 5mm thick steel bar on top of the frame. Will that be enough? You'll find that out in part 2. Also, later on, I'll connect the steering column to this steel bar. Now, in the middle of the frame, I added this square tube so that I could then later on weld the steering column on top of it. You'll see it in a second what I mean. Turn it around like this. Frame mm -hmm. uh, so here I'm melding some brackets on that steel bar. No idea what kind of metal those were, but they were melding so easily. And then you can see some beautiful welding. I would classify it as art. Brother, uh. Let's do this. That thing is going nowhere. Let's see how it is. Damn, that's a lot of camera on these videos. Well, it does look like one of those Sony cars. So I would just roll it up now. Put it on. Very funny. So I thought of doing the turning mechanism like so, but it doesn't work because when I try to turn it, it jams up and it won't turn. So I won't be able to do it like this and I have to find something different. So this is what I ended up doing. Here I created the Formula 1 style steering wheel without all the unnecessary buttons of course. I later on attached the remote to the right side of the steering wheel. In order to attach the motors to the frame, I had to add an extra piece that would go right under the seat. I'm talking as if I had a plan or something, but I really don't. I'm just adding shit to it and hoping for the best. Which is actually a metaphor for how I go through my day. Okay, so for the drivetrain, we got two sprockets on one sprocket hub. With in between the two sprockets, there are three spacers, so that there's enough space for two chains. I've just marked where I need to put the motors. Now I'm going to add a little bit of steel on the inside here, so I can then mount this to the side of it. Now you're probably wondering what kind of motors are we going to use? Whoa. Those are the Flipsky 637400 kV motors. They're usually for onboarding, but today they're going to power our go-kart. Aren't those like way too small? I know they look kind of small, but together they're actually quite powerful and can produce up to 7000 watts. Okay, let's go. I drill the hole slightly larger than needed. This way I can slide the motors forward or backward to adjust the tension on the chain. So this turns into this for extra rigidity because a circle is stronger than a bar on its own. And as an ESC we have the Plexi SSESC 420. Which is kind of weird because this is the controller and usually the go-kart has a foot pedal, but uh, I don't know how to turn a remote into a foot pedal because I'm stupid, but yeah, this is going to be fun. Fun, huh? More like a disaster waiting to happen, but I'm in. 
How am I going to get ESC on this frame? I need like a type of box to put it in. Didn't you already make like a little box for an electric longboard? You're absolutely right. I reinforced the inside of the box by gluing aluminium corner profiles to it. Then I cut out a piece of aluminium because I didn't have a cover for the box. I love how easily aluminium can be cut using this technique. That's something you won't find on Wikiho. So apparently three years ago when I made this box, I didn't know how to measure because what the fuck is this? You still can't. No, shut the fuck. <laughs> I actually meant to do this. It's like a ventilation hole so that the heat can get out. A friend of mine is an engineer at Google and he told me that this project looked like absolute dog shit. I'm just kidding. But he told me that ladder is supposed to be used vertically and that I'm using it horizontally, which makes it a lot weaker. That's why I added those steel bars. So for the battery, it's a 52 volt 20 amp hour battery with 50 amps BMS, so it's respectable. Wait a minute. Do I see this right? This battery costs 335 euros? Who approved this? Come on guys. It's just money. It's not my fault that you're broke. Maybe they can like and subscribe so we can make the money back. So I have this third step that I didn't use and maybe I can put the battery in it to support it. So yeah, that's just basically what I did. Cut out some metal as a support, welded that to the frame, and this will also add some stiffness to the frame, which is also something that I meant to do because I always think two steps ahead. So I just welded this piece on there, but now I realize I can't put the seat down anymore. So, so I'm gonna have to drill this out so I can take the seed out, which I should have done from the beginning. I think I might be some kind of genius. To work with. Now this is something that I'm quite proud of. I made some sort of mechanism so that I can secure the battery in place and take it out if necessary. By the way, did you know that you can loosen zip ties by squeezing them with pliers so that you don't always have to cut them? Now for the rear end, it's open. So it's not sturdy because as you can see with little force I can bend the whole rear axle. So we don't want this. So I need to reinforce it with some metal bars here. Also this part is the only part that isn't reinforced by other pieces of metal like here. So if enough weight gets on this, it might break. Now to prevent this I added a lot of very heavy steel bars. Someone asked me like, why didn't you use hollow tubes? Because they're way lighter of course. Well that's probably because I'm mentally restarted and also because I suck at welding thin shit. I'm going to try to remove the back seal so that the aluminium can be glued to the other aluminium. Now this is the part where I really started to doubt if this go-car would ever work. I had to program the ESC, something I've never done before in my life. But with the help of some YouTube video hidden deep in the YouTube algorithm, my buddy ChatGPT and my very powerful brain, I gave it a shot. But will it work? Yes! Hell yeah! Hey, come on, baby! Come on! Yes! Come on! Ah! Yes! Yes! Oh. Wait, Fatun. <laughs> it fucking works. Yes. Now it's time to attach the VST to the box. It's so going to overheat. No, it won't. Because I bought some thermal paste so that the heat can go from the VSC to the aluminium box. Aluminum. Aluminium. Aluminum. Aluminium. Aluminum. Aluminium. Aluminum. Aluminium. Aluminium. Aluminum. Aluminium. Aluminum. Aluminum. Aluminium. Aluminium. Aluminum. I didn't explain how I did everything and I also didn't explain how to program it, so if you're interested let me know in the comments so I can make a video to explain how to program this vest. Another problem that I had was that I couldn't find any 10mm D-shaped sprockets. The only ones I found were H-shaped. But here's the cool thing about the letter H. If you file it hard enough, you can gaslight it into thinking it's a D. Problem solved, you'd think. Well, not so fast. There was still some annoying wiggle on the motor shaft. No, instead of fixing it properly, I just welded everything together. Is it precise? No. Is it safe? Debatable. Does it work? Absolutely. Wait a minute. Actually, I'll have to test that. After two months of hard work and dedication, I can finally say that it's... But it still looks like shit. Well, he's kind of right, you know. 
So, how do we fix that? Remember that little dirt bike you had? The one that got stolen twice? Yeah. yeah. No, painting? Painting is easy, like caveman level easy. But the prep work, that's where legends are made. Anyway, the rims used to be this tragic metallic grey, but now, pure bliss. Now they look like they belong on a supermoto. Oh, and you're gonna see that I was painting inside by the way, because it got dark outside and patience never heard of her. I'm too busy fighting off the constant existential dread that I'm not doing enough with my life. That's why I found myself in my garage at 4am covered in fluorescent paints, fixing problems that don't actually need fixing. But hey, progress, right? This is one of those trust the process moments. Oh, and about the pit bike, I decided to follow the same color scheme I used there. My father-in-law thought that I was a closet nationalist for a second because the color matched the Belgian flag, but honestly, I just like how it looks. That sticker is really cool because when people ask me what I'm driving, I can point to the sticker and say it's actually a ladder. <coughs> Alright, let's hit pause for a second. I've been working on this for two months now and honestly, apart from the rear axle drama, everything's gone suspiciously smooth. Like I've secretly been building go-karts in my sleep for years. But here's the kicker. My vacation is almost over and the clock is ticking. It's time to connect everything, do a test drive and experience acceleration so brutal it feels like your soul is lagging behind while the g-forces slap you into the driver's seat and whisper Welcome to your budget F1 experience No! God please no! 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 It's 3am, I'm exhausted, starving, freezing and dangerously close to losing my sanity. Naturally, that's when the universe decides to ruin my streak of everything's fine. So what went wrong? Well, I have no clue. If I knew, I'd be halfway done fixing it. Now in my desperation, I asked ChatGPT what was wrong. Its first response, you procrastinate too much, lack self-belief and okay no, I meant like with the go-kart. Anyway, a possible solution was in the motor wiring. When I programmed the ESC, the cables were in ABC order, but when I installed it on the card, I might have gone BAC or who knows, maybe even CBA, because some dude on Reddit confidently told me that it didn't matter which order I plugged them in. So I tried switching it back to ABC. Problem solved? Of course not. My last hope? CAB. Will it work? Stay tuned while I question every life decision leading up to this moment. Yeah. Yes! This is it. Pure uncut happiness. The kind that screams, I actually did something. And I'm not totally useless. It's the joy of impressing your 12 year old self. The kid who thought go-karts and explosions were a peak experience. And honestly, he was right. This, this is pride. Now for the seating arrangement, I've got some foam. I've got an old t-shirt. Let's get it. Foam of the battery. Hold together with zip ties and glue, goes into here and then we cover it. Boom! That's how you do it. And somehow against all odds and zero planning skills, it all came together perfectly. The ropes and zip ties? Chef's kiss. Nothing screams professional quite like budget engineering. Oh, and what about ergonomics? Don't even worry. This bad boy got lumbar support. I'm talking recycled t-shirt couture and leftover battery foam. Who needs money when you have pipes? As for hope? Well, it's hope I don't wrap this thing around a tree. Nice. No, I just had to assemble the last pieces and then I could finally hit the streets. Sometimes I genuinely amaze myself. Other times, well, we don't talk about that. Alright, it's time for the first ever test drive. No, I just want to say before you dive into building your own, make sure to check out part 2. This video would have been way too long if I added everything here, but rest assured, I've already put the correct part list in the description below. Because actually I made a mistake when pairing two very important parts in this video. So in the next video I'll show you what didn't work, also something broke which I had to rebuild, plus we'll take this thing to the next level with a top speed test run, some serious stress testing and the race against my motorcycle. Oh, and let me tell you, this go-kart turned my sleepy little village into a full-blown spectacle. Like I couldn't go 20 meters without being stopped by kids and neighbors asking, what is that thing? Or how did you even make this? For a place where there's not much happening, this was the event of the year. And honestly, seeing those big smiles as I roared past, absolute perfection. See you in part 2.